since I'm calling your cell phone, I need to ask, are you currently doing anything that would make it unsafe for you to talk, such as driving? No. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Harper Collins. Hey, Harper. And this year is Frank repping the Flyers because uh, every other sport sucks in Philly. Really? Well, they're all lost. Did they? I think the Flyers are losing pretty, like, they've been losing too, though. Way to go, Frank. <laughs> so we're not even going to dwell on sports today. What we're going to dwell on is the Lord. And um, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, nothing else. Uh, Nothing else but the Lord. Nothing no, else. of course not. <laughs> is there anything else? There isn't. No. There really isn't. Um, You know, what's his name? Mike Tyson, you, you told me about him a long time ago at this point, and I still haven't watched interviews, but I saw a clip of an interview, and uh, I, forget, I forget who it was, and they were like t- saying about how, um, you know, he used to be really poor, and he made so much money, and it's like m- money doesn't buy happiness, and then the interviewer was like, well, I don't know about that, and then Mike was like, then you've never had a lot of money. Ooh. Huh. They always say, um, you know, not and by they, I mean, like, I don't know who they are, but you often hear whoever came up with money doesn't buy happiness was poor, trying to make themselves feel better. Right, of course. You they never, said the same thing about religion, though. Yeah, you never really think about it the opposite way, which is what Mike is saying, is it's not, because you're like, Oh, you were poor. Oh, money doesn't buy happiness. I don't need money. Right. But what if it's rich? It's it's right. all the people that have the money. And it's like, but nobody wants to believe them because it's like, well, yeah, let me find out. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't know what it's like down here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Is that such a, but to, you know, when you do have someone who has seen both sides of it. And I always say, you know, with Mike Tyson, because now, I mean, I'm sure he's, he's a whole different human being than he yeah. was. I'm sure he loves the money that he has and, and the opportunity, mm-hmm. but they often say that money just, what's it called, makes everything bigger. Mm. Like it, it showcases everything more. Okay. More money, more problems. You <laughs> really? Know? It, That's what you're saying? So I thought you were saying like, if you can afford your apartment with with this amount of money, you can afford your mansion with this amount of money. It's the same. It's the same bill. Well, well, yeah, but well, that, that is also the case. So I'm saying like money can make good things better, but bad things worse. You know, you know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And and so it's it's not so much that money itself is bad. It's if you are if you are a gambler, and right? And you don't yeah. have a lot of money. You're you're spending, you know, whatever. But it's like it makes that problem worse. If you have depression, yeah, you see it all the time with celebrities where it's like the isolation and loneliness at the top is almost worse than right. being alone at you know at, at the bottom. Yeah. And um so it's like but then yeah, like good things where if, you know, you give a dollar to a homeless person, that can be a million dollar charity. Right. And so it's Well there is a there is a formula that with a certain price, and I think it's only like a hundred thousand or something like that, that your 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 happiness definitely rises to that point yeah and increases to that point right yeah but then it's that's the point where you can no longer yeah because yeah i when you i wouldn't be ecstatic when to i be saw a billionaire. <laughs> when i saw it, it was seventy five thousand dollars a year okay like personally not like um but that was years ago mm-hmm. and i imagine it went up so it probably like around hundred thousand mm-hmm. but yeah because below that is where most people are talking where mm-hmm. it's like obviously of i need course, medicine yeah of course you know not knowing if you're gonna be able to pay your rent yeah or dead feed, car or yeah. feed your kids yeah mm-hmm. or, or get to work that is is it's hard to be happy like, right some people are and, and bless them but um once you get that and like you no longer are stressed out about being able to live after that right it's all just it, it's if you're driving a, a nice working car having a nicer working car isn't going to inherently affect your right. true happiness. Right. Your material happiness, sure, but like that only does so much. Like Yeah. It, it only does so much for sure and you get we humans uh get accustomed to things 
everything. You get accustomed to everything. You can be accustomed yeah. to being beat. You can become accustomed to smells and you become accustomed to how rich you are. So, yeah. you know, a a one star hotel, two star, three star, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if I'm in a three star, the person in a one star is, I wish I could be in a three star. But But once you're in the three star level hotel bracket, it's not. Yeah. You know. And I mean like uh like and obviously I never like to use the argument of someone has it worse. Mm -hmm. Cuz I think it's a, it's an awful argument. It it negates people's real problems that like right. I can still have problems if I'm not, you know, dying, you know, mm -hmm. I don't I'm missing my legs or I have half of a heart. You can still have problems. With that being said though, it's like it it always just is like, oh, well, you know, money can buy happiness. It's well, you're not happy right now. So like, yeah, well Nine times that, unless, and I'm sorry if this is true, that you are the poorest person on earth, like, mm -hmm. and you, you you don't know if you're gonna eat tomorrow. But Someone, you, have, you have a computer to watch. So this. If you're you're watching this in English, <laughs> like in, in America, it's yeah, no. it's. I was being funny, like no. the poorest person on earth is watching Croak and Crow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never. I hope so. I hope they are. Um, a necessity, not. You're rich to someone. Like, like if someone could trade places, like right. you live in America and you have shoes and and a car, and it's like. You're like, well, yeah, but to them, it's like, that would be enough for happiness. Right. It's like, yeah, well, and that goes back to don't do that because you don't know what you don't know. You can still have problems. Right. And that's what I would say. Of course, don't think just because I have shoes, I should be happy. Right. But then you have to keep going. But then don't think that a billionaire should be happy because they have a Bugatti. Happier. Yeah. So the same way we're not doing it from this to you where it's like, well, you should be happy because you have shoes in your car. Don't like that argument. Right. Well, then I have to then agree and say the same thing about, well, you should be happy because you have a mansion and, and right. medical insurance, <laughs> which are, they go ahead and then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually. Um, well, because I think the, the problem is the word happy. And that's why last Friday we had um, the up book of Dr. Seuss. And I liked the, I liked saying up as opposed to being happy. Yeah. Because because it's really more um, attainable to 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 be up, to be up a little bit, yeah. or you know, physically and mentally to be happy. Yeah, yeah. it's like. But um, are you happy? I'm up. Right. So so when you say it, money doesn't bring happiness, I think the word the problem is is with the word happy because, um, you know, in our is it our constitution where it says we have the right to life, liberty, liberty and, and the, the pursuit, pursuit of, of happiness. happiness. So I think life does require money. Unfortunately, in the word cost of living, yeah. life requires money. It does. So if you have, and, and, and actually we aren't granted life for free. No. Unfortunately, you have to pay for water. You have to pay for yeah. heat. You have to pay for food. Um, even if you farm, you're paying for supplies. So that's the problem, I think, because money is necessary for life. And then, and then, you know, maybe that's where that limit comes where you, when can I pursue happiness? Because if you're pursuing survival, I guess you would be happy, but it's not, I don't think that word, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they're two different things. Well, I'm going to use the same sentence that you just said from our grand old constitution and also just see it in another perspective where I think it's also nice the way it's written where it's life. Yeah. Okay. We want life, liberty, okay, freedom and the pursuit of happiness. Why isn't it life, liberty and happiness? Right. Cause that's not like you, you can't, it isn't as easy as that. Like no. money can't buy happiness. No, like money can help. You I, find your particular money can help with the pursuit of happiness. Right. And so it's like, why can't money buy happiness? Cause well, nothing can buy happiness. And where would you buy it? And what's your happiness compared to it, mine? It, it's it's all all you can be given, or all you have the ability to do is pursue happiness. Right. And that's not nothing gets it for free. Not if you're poor. Not if you're rich. Right. You and that goes back to my rich analogy of it makes everything bigger. Is like it opens more doors for the pursuit of happiness. Right. It doesn't make you happy. Right. And and when you're poor, you can still pursue happiness, and it's not like there's this there's a. Uh, middleman along the way where it's like money okay now you can have happiness right it's all about the pursuit of, and yeah obviously 
if you are dirt poor under that limit that right. like that is even like living you have a lot less it's a lot harder to pursue happiness or freedom so you you can have both right yeah you, i think that's like sort of the mental thing it's you can want money and instead of saying i want money because it'll make me happy it's well once you have money then what are you going to do to make you happy right oh well you know i really love foreign cultures and i want to travel more mm -hmm. I, I want to do more altruistic things and it's like you're saying how money will help you pursue happiness. Right. You're not saying that money will buy you happiness. Right. Pursuit and buying, two different things. Right. How about that? Figured it out. And money buys the, the pursuit. The 1%, right which is the, the richest people who control the, everything, really are shorting Americans, at least, I can't speak for other countries, on the second two things. They are saying um, life. You, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> that is what you get. You yeah. get to have life. And so work hard for it. Work yeah. hard for your life. And which is what I just said. Keep yourself healthy and fed and warm and protected. But literally freedom is for the 1%. That's the freedom to go to a doctor you want, freedom to go to a school you want, freedom to go anywhere you want. And the pursuit of happiness is for rich people. Because if you are consumed with survival, the only thing that you are focused on in that constitution is life. Yeah, well, I think it's it's easier. I, th I think I, I don't know if I necessarily fully agree with that. Where you, I think that's the sort of the distinguishing factor of have it be pursuit of happiness because it's when people are trying to get rich, it's I'm pursuing money and that'll buy happiness. But mm -hmm. it's like you can be in survival mode whilst pursuing happiness. Yeah. And that should be the goal. Mike Tyson wasn't pursuing. And he'll, te he'll tell you this himself. I talked to him. He was pursuing this goal that had nothing to do with happiness. Mm -hmm. He really, It was like, it was never about pursuing happiness. Right. And so he pursued to be the meanest, greenest fighting machine. He, pers he pers um, pursued. He pursued to, to be the greatest fighter of all time. He pursued to never be poor again. Never at all in the, in this pursued happiness. And when he got to the top and he, he achieved everything he pursued, he realized this entire time he wasn't pursuing happiness. And now it's just as far away from him as it was when he was at the bottom. But aren't you preoccupied with pursuing just a standard of living, the lowest standard of living? No, I, I, th I think happiness comes from within. Um, I think... I think it's equally hard, and, that, and that's why the, I think the biggest problem with the pursuit of of or the idea that money buys happiness is mm -hmm. I think the pursuit of happiness is just as hard as the pursuit of money. So and it takes just as long. You have to jump through as much hurdles in the pursuit of happiness as you do in the pursuit of of wealth, in the pursuit of fame, okay, in the pursuit of happiness. So when you spend so much time pursuing one you don't realize that like it, mike tyson i told you he's, he's happier now right i took him literally just as long as it did to become the, the world's best fighter to now be at this elevated state where he is spiritual he is happy he's surrounded by good people because he was young when he was fighting he was like yeah. 19 20 right it took him 20 years he got out when he was like 30 he's like in his 50s now it took him really up until the last few years he started coming back out being happy so it took him 20 years in the pursuit of happiness after he had found fun mm -hmm. or after he, he found out that's what he wanted mm -hmm. to be at the high level of happiness. And you can do things simultaneously. So you can't put pursuing happiness on the back burner and walk around grumpy to your job every day and say, what's there to be happy about? I'm, I'm in survival mode. You need to pursue both because you, you have to nurture each the same okay. to get to the end goal of both. Okay. And and that's why and you see people do one and not the other. Right. That's why you see rich people that aren't happy. That's why you see happy people that aren't rich. Yeah. You can be happy and rich. And you and you see that a lot and it's because this entire time they were pursuing both. Right. That's what I think at least. You need to take it. Yeah. And since I'm calling yourself off, I need to ask are you currently doing anything that would make it unsafe for you to talk, such as driving? No. But how long is it? Yeah, 
thank you for your responses. And we now have a few additional questions for you about COVID-19 vaccinations. And this survey usually takes about eight to 10 minutes. Okay. And we are back. How was your phone call? I, I did my my uh, part You're as a United States American American citizen, which I was free to refuse the survey. I'm thinking I signed up for it, not yeah. not knowingly, but um, yeah, like at the bottom of, of getting one of your vaccines. Do you mind? Like, yeah, with, yeah, asking answering questions. Well, when the CDC when the CDC calls, you answer. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want them to say you've just been bombed with viral warfare and put on put on your shower bonnet over your face. Well, I don't know if that would help in uh, viral warfare. That's why I answered. <laughs> well, now you know. Well, I'm happy that you had that phone call. Um, let's just get into it. Okay. What were we at? 14 minutes? Yeah. 16? It is Thursday. And as you guys know, on Thursday, we have a fun thing that brings me happiness. Um, and we're going to pursue it. It is Walk Through Thursday. Roll, roll, roll the intro, please. <laughs> Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What is up, guys? It is Walk Through Thursday, a great day um, to be alive and to be here, whether you're on this side speaking or that side listening. Wish that side was speaking. If they, we can be like Dora. <laughs> like, yeah. do you know what day it is? Yeah, it's Walk Through Thursday. On Walk Through Thursday, we open up the Bible. Bible's open. Once the Bible's open, we um, what do we do? We look through it and grab something, and then we um just hold on to it and talk about it. Yeah, we we pick a book from the Bible and uh, we take a verse out of one of those books, and um, you know, normally we we're, we're always talking about, hey, you don't need to you don't need to get hung up on every word, right? Um, the Bible's it, it's about overarching themes about just living good, loving, happy lives, and um. You can break it down to that. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> um, Kiss the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't negate, you know, you can do two, two things can be happen, happening simultaneously. Once you have that basis, then you can go and look every word special in the Bible. Yeah. And so um, we are picking a single verse and we're going to, it's kind of like, uh, it's a little, this is the contract where we're doing both things. Every day we talk about the over, overall ideas, but now that we got a little time on our hands, we're going to talk about one verse and then maybe break it down slow because it, it takes a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, so uh, we're going to do that. We're going to we're going to break it down. We're going to chop it down. We're going to go sentence by sentence, uh, line by line, uh, word by word, letter by letter, even. Um, that's about it. And so, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So we're reading out of the book of Jonah. Book of Jonah. Book of Jonah. Must be um, hard to write a book when you're inside of a whale. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Jonah because... I don't think the whale story is in the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah only has four chapters and it's nothing about a whale. So I think he shows up later in someone else's book. Probably. Well, so what happens is is Jonah was, was called upon by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's like, go to this place. Jonah's like, I ain't going to that place. Uh, being called upon the Lord's a big ask. I just want to live my life. Right. You know, he, he was just pursuing, uh, he was just pursuing peace. <laughs> and he's like, ah, it's a lot of, that's a, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And so he's like, God, thank you. I'm honored. I, I, I don't want appreciate to appreciate <laughs> it. But I don't I'm, want to help. I don't want, I, I don't want, I'm not your guy. Yeah. You have the wrong guy. Pick, and so choose he, somebody else. He like runs off to Nivea or something and um, a whale comes Nineveh. And, and swallows him up. So and, it is. Oh, so it is in this book then. Cause well, this is about Nineveh. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't exactly know if that's where in that this happens. Book. Okay. Maybe this is once. The whale spits him up and it's like, all right, fine. You got me. Thanks, God. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. Then did he write his book? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, was yeah, it like yeah. the precursor to that? I don't know. It I don't is. know either, but we don't need to. Um, You said one verse. So you could pick 10 or 11. I had 10 and 11 for you. How about I just read 10? Okay. I turned off. Oh, I know why. Turn I have it back this, on. Yeah, well, because I have a game on my phone. Are you trying to wait for the CDC to call you? I, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> like, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, all right, Jonah 4, 10 to 11. Mm -hmm. 10 and 11. Yeah, same difference. Well, I think 10 to 11 would just be 10, wouldn't it? Or it would be um, 10 yeah. 50. 10 to 11. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. 
And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 100,000, 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? I'm going to read that again. You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their left from their right and also many animals? What does it mean? Okay. So you already told the first part of the story um, of Jonah, who, who who doesn't want to help, right? And you, and God says... It's like Jon Snow's. I don't want it. Yeah. And it, so he's like, do it. So it goes. And, and it is to help the city of Nineveh. Um, and God says, go and tell them that if they do these things... They're, they're being very, very bad. And if they do these things, then I will have mercy on them. So... Uh, 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 Jonah doesn't want to do it and he runs away or whatever and he's found and he's abrupt uh, they think they throw him off the ship remember he's on yeah. the ship oh yeah so it would be when he got swallowed yeah. swallowed he was cursing the ship because they were like who why who's God mad at on this yeah. and they, over you go okay that's what happens he's now and then he does what God finally said he finally tells the people Nineveh you have to repent God's really mad the people do repent Jonah this is the last chapter this is this is four and the backstory is that he's mad, very mad at God. And he's like, I'm really mad. And Why'd you make him do that? Yeah, and God's like, why? And he's like, Jonah says, why do you think I was hiding in the first place? They don't deserve mercy. Oh. They don't deserve mercy. Who cares? Once I threatened them, they turned good. I don't think you should have, I don't think you should reward them. Mm. So God plays a little trick on them. Um, this is Jonah 4. At the beginning of Jonah 4, God grows a, a plant like a like a like a canopy plant over him it's protecting him from the sun and he's happy to be under the plant but then god sends a worm the worm eats the plant jonah's getting baked by the sun and he's like oh, i am not enjoying this trip <laughs> <laughs> and so now this is god talking to him and saying wow you're upset because the plant's gone you're upset because i took the plant from you i'm upset be- you're upset because you're getting all sunburnt and um what like you're, you feel bad for the plant, but you don't feel bad for this town, this town that had uh, 120,000 people. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And um, I think there's also a co- comparison to be made about um, God, uh, what's it called? The creation of the plant and those are all his people, his plants that he created. Yeah. And, um, and so you have not concerned with the great city of which there are more than, and so it's like, there's 120,000 plants, you know, like grown things in, in those city and animals. And it's like, you don't think they deserve to live. And it's right. like, why? And why did he like the plant? Why did he care about the plant and not the people? It's well, cause the plant was benefiting him. Yeah. And so it kind of goes, it goes to that of like, what gives you the right to decide who deserves what? Right. Whether they're benefiting you or whether it's like they're they're benefiting someone. And, and right. it, just, it just sort of, yeah, it goes to that personal thing we have a lot in ourselves. And it's like, why, like, why shouldn't we judge and why shouldn't we? And it's like, it's this idea that all things created by God are, are beneficial and you can't judge things on whether or not they benefit you. Right. Because the, it's like, that, that's why he cared about the plant. But it's like, that, that's kind of, 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 you were concerned with this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It's like. It was a gift from God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it was like, you're upset that you lost it. And it's like, it was never yours. Right. And in that negative way, it was never yours. It's like the same reason he's concerned with the plant. He's concerned about the people in a negative way. Well, they shouldn't have gotten it. Right. And it's like the same way you didn't tend the plant. It's like you didn't create these people. Right. You you aren't me. I created this plant. Why do you care? And it's like I created these people. Why are you questioning? Right. Why are you questioning why the, why this plant's gone? Why are you questioning why um I I care about these people to be right done? It, it I like it. Yeah. It definitely goes to. Just the idea of you're not me. 
<laughs> God saying that. It's, yeah. it's like, why are, are you casting judgment, playing God of whether or not these people are good? I created them. Are you saying what I created wasn't good? Right. And also, it, it, it's because it, it even goes, it's like, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left. And so it's, it's all, it's also like the idea that he was helping that he was like right. the same way if he asked like a, a plant you know to you to plant a, a water a plant that he grew mm-hmm. it's like are you are you jo- well the plant wasn't even providing me shade why, why are you going to water it it's like because i uh, <laughs> to pro- make it provide like right well, it, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's it's definitely a merciful god talking here because mm. he is he didn't even have to say any of this, actually, but he didn't have to say they don't know their right hand from their left. It it should be enough to say that they're people, yeah. they're, you know, thousands of people that need my help. But he's also saying like like a parent of a child, you know, if you were like, why are why aren't you punishing the little kid for yeah. spilling the milk? And it's like he's a child. Yeah. So he's saying these people don't know their right hand from their left. They deserve yeah. my mercy. And and I and I'm really impressed as well with the last um four words which is and also many animals i mean super merciful to bring up the animals you know and also like lean not on your own understanding Mm. thank you jonah you did a job for me but for you you don't have the understanding i have i know why i saved that town and it doesn't affect you yeah why are you so jealous yeah why are you resentful and i think that's exactly why the plan because it could have just been the second part mm-hmm. why do you care why are you so jealous why are you resentful like and um the v- first part why did he make the plant just to kill it and then it's because it's like it's showing why are you resentful and it's like because you weren't benefiting mm-hmm. right like mm-hmm. you didn't care about it. you like you I, I sent you to help these people and you're getting why should they have been helped i just gave you a plant didn't even ask you to do anything and it died, and you're like, "Well, why'd you do that?" It's like you you can't only care about the things that benefit you. Yeah, that's it, a, it's, it's funny because I when I printed it out, I didn't see that angle, but now that you're saying it, um, I definitely see it now. It's and it's like cause, it really cause, illustrates because also like they're, they're, he's sort of questioning God. Yeah. Well, why Why did you even help them? Right. He didn't once question the plant. Mm-mm. He was actually concerned when it when it was killed off right and he's like well why'd you kill it off it was benefiting me and it's like but he's just as easily wants these people to get killed off right? right it's like we'll just kill them off and it's like because they're not benefiting you maybe that's even why they added the animals there yeah. it, it's like there is animals because animals can survive on their own mm-hmm. right but it's like the people are hosting the animal without the people you know the animal and it's right. like they're benefiting someone right you kill off the people all of the the pigs in the pig pen are gonna die yeah and it's like yeah, but they don't deserve. You didn't deserve the plant. Yeah, you're, you're still well, concerned. I'm glad you brought that up because it's very self righteous. When he got the plant, he didn't say, "Why did you give me this plant? I don't deserve it." Yeah, I was reluctant to yes. help. Yes, I'm actually harboring hate in my heart for this for Nineveh. Yeah, why did I get the plant, Lord? Why? Why am I so lucky that I got this plant? No, he did not talk about the plant until God took the plant from him. At that point, he should have known what it felt like to be Nineveh to yeah. be. It, uncomfortable to be yeah. you know um vulnerable yeah but he wasn't yeah, yeah, he was still good, resentful that's, that's a good point right it's like yeah you don't question your blessings but you question other people's right you, you he doesn't he didn't question at all why he got a plant but you're questioning other people's blessings right you they they, they the, these people they, they don't deserve this right you don't deserve shade right i gave you shade you didn't question it once right you didn't help it grow it was just there but other people benefit, and, and I mean, this is, is throughout time. You, you see it with with the the story, the Jesus's parable about the grape farmers who mm-hmm. each were getting paid a different wage, and but they all agree to it. It's right. always this idea of not counting your own blessings, but counting other people's. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's like like the happiness thing from from the beginning. It's so much of happiness is, is or what people perceive as happiness is what others have. Right, and it's like. Well, why did they get it? Yeah. Well, why did they have money? Well, why did they have this? And it's like, you're not counting your, your own, but as soon as you lose, you're like, oh, well, I have the worst luck. This is, this is, I'm being targeted. And it's like, 
you need to stop. You, you like you should always want the best for everyone, right? Because it it all it goes full circle in that way, and um, I think definitely just be yeah, be mindful of your own blessings and don't be apprehensive to others' blessings. It has nothing like, to do with you, and yeah, I think just yeah, definitely throughout the Bible that you just you see this this concept of humans questioning the blessings of others and whether right. they deserve it or not. Right. But never, you know, it, it goes to judgment of take the raw, the, the, the speck out of your eye. Wait, no. Take the log out of your eye before you try to take the, the oh, speck right. out of your brothers. Right. And it's just always the, nobody ever consciously really checks themselves and, and say, how many blessings I get that I don't really deserve. Right. But as soon as someone gets something that you don't, you deem they don't deserve, then you're like, well, this is this is baloney. <laughs> so yeah, because I mean, look at that. You, you had you had two people get something that whether whether it was reserved deserved or not, it's up in the air. But he didn't care because he didn't he wanted the shade, but he said, well, they don't deserve that. And also, yeah, back. To, sorry, I feel like I'm talking the most. No, but. You cannot tell their their uh, left hand from their right um, is sort of the same problem of like he's cooking in the sun. You both had you both had issues, so he he acknowledges the fact that they're not per like they had a problem. Right, they needed my my help. Right, just the same way you needed to get out of the sun. Right, and I and I helped both, and you got mad at one and not the other. Why I didn't have empathy yeah. at that point? Yeah. And I, I just also like where he's like the great city of, of Nineveh. Well, yeah. It's like yeah. When, when he's like talking, he's like, okay, slow down there. Exactly. Like Girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is great. And it's like, I feel like that just kind of like halts the conversation. Yeah, of like, course. Which it should. Yeah. Shout out God. <laughs> Always. He really, he really got, got Jonah on that one. And I'm sure Jonah took that one to heart. Mm -hmm. But anyway, guys, that's our podcast. It's been fun. We talked about pursuit of happiness. You called the CDC. They was called, was that they um, called me? Was that Fauci on the phone? Um, I don't know. It could have been a scammer taking all my demographics. I don't know. That's true. Did you give them credit card information? Yeah. <laughs> all right. And we talked about Jonah and the lions. Then. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. Um, we'll be back tomorrow for Doctor Seuss Friday. We have a book ready to go. I'm looking at it. So don't think we're gonna miss it. Um, be good. Be fruitful. Be um be Be nice to other people that you don't think deserve it. <laughs> yeah, stop stop counting other people's blessings and start counting your own. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Peace. Your legs are better. Not really. <laughs>